Hello, my friends. Hank here, back for another episode of Sherman School, where we're learning all about the legendary American medium tank of the Second World War, the M4 Sherman. Now, the purpose of this whole series is to help you remember some crucial visual cues to look out for whenever you see reference images or archival videos of Sherman tanks that will help you identify the exact variant of the M4 that you're looking at. And today's class is a big one because, believe it or not, if you can see the rear of a Sherman tank, the engine deck or the rear silhouette, that's going to be one of your best and biggest clues for determining what kind of M4 you're looking at. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Sherman School Part 4, the engine deck and rear silhouette. All right, so as you know, if you've been watching the series so far, we've been working through my heats system for identifying Sherman tank variants. In our last episode, we chatted all about the power plants of these various Sherman models and how these engine differences are the reason for having all these subvariant families of the Sherman, i.e. the M4, the M4A1, the M4A2, etc. Now, we of course can't see the engine itself in most historical images of the Sherman, but we can see the visual clues on the outside of the tank that reveal to us what power plant is inside that particular vehicle. In this video, I'm going to be referring to my trusty Sherman spotter's guide and Sherman datasheet posters a bit. If you'd like, you can grab yourself one over at spruceandbruce.com or in the shop just below this video. They're not required, but they can be a handy reference to have later. So let's start by looking at our rear silhouettes. As we've learned, both our M4 and M4A1 Shermans are powered by the Continental R975 radial engine. This was the original power plant that the tank was designed around. And both of these variants, the M4 and the M4A1, are going to have a rear panel silhouette that I like to refer to as the upside down U. The rear vertical portion of the upper hull is going to have this gently arcing cut just above the engine access hatches and the air cleaners. You can't miss it. These sloping cuts are only on the M4s and M4A1s. All the other variants of the Sherman are going to have sharp angled rear plates without that gentle curve. And our M4A1s of course have cast hulls while the M4s have welded hulls. So if you see this upside down U rear panel with a cast hull, it is definitely an M4A1. And if you see it with a welded hull, it's definitely an M4. Only caveat here, take a peek up towards the front of the vehicle if you can. Our composite Shermans, the M4A1 cast bows mated to the M4 welded hulls, have that same upside down U silhouette. So if you see that welded mate line in between the cast hull and the welded hull, you're looking at an M4 composite. Now let's move forward to our M4A2s. The M4A2 rear silhouette is what I like to refer to as the big T. Big welded vertical plate goes up, out, up and then angles back in to meet at the top. It looks a little bit like this. Now I will say these little graphics that I'm using aren't 100% proportionally accurate to all the angles and such on the actual vehicle. These are just here to give you a little easy visual cue as to what these panels look like. So our M4A2s with the General Motors 6046 diesel engines are going to feature this big T rear silhouette. If we move forward to our M4A3, this variant also features that big T silhouette, but fear not, there's one big key difference here. Nearly all M4A3s are going to have this big grate-like exhaust deflector at the bottom of that T-shape. These were started as a sheet metal production and were later improved to be an armored exhaust deflector, but they look relatively similar. For our purposes though, take a peek below that rear panel, the big T, on whatever Sherman you're looking at, and if there's an exhaust deflector grate, a slated grate like this, it's most likely an M4A3. Some retrofitted M4A2s were given similar exhaust deflectors late in the war, but it's quite uncommon to see M4A2s with them in photographs. So odds are, if you see a grate on a big T rear panel, it's an M4A3. The way to know for sure? Check the markings on the tank. If it's got Commonwealth or Soviet markings, it's an M4A2. M4A3s were not shipped overseas as Lend-Lease vehicles, so if you see a big T with British markings, for example, there's your tip-off. Gotta be an M4A2. And finally, our M4A4 is actually a pretty easy one to spot. I call the M4A4 rear silhouette the small T because the upper portion is shaped just like everybody else, but there's just going to be this little tiny notch down at the bottom. The rear plate of the M4A4 almost goes straight across horizontally with the exception of this little jog here. Easy peasy, you see that little T and boom, guaranteed M4A4. So those are our rear silhouettes. As you can see, some pretty huge clues here. If you can see the rear of the tank, you can pretty much for certain determine at least which major variant of the Sherman you're looking at, a la the M4, the M4A1, the M4A2, the M4A3, or the M4A4. Now, if you can't quite see the rear silhouette of the vehicle, but you can see the top of the engine deck, 
That is also going to be a huge help here. Starting back with our M4s and M4A1s, again, same power plant here, the Continental R975 Radial. The clue we're looking for with M4s and M4A1s is this armored cover over the air inlet. Kind of looks like a trap door that folds back. Only M4s and M4A1s are going to have this, none of the other variants. So again, if you've got a cast hull and this armored cover on the engine deck, obviously M4A1. If it's welded with this cover, it's an M4. Now the M4A2 and the M4A3 have somewhat similar engine decks, but we've got two main clues to look for that separate the two variants. Both are going to have double hatches, right, that fold up like this. The M4A2 hatches, though, they're going to be a little smaller. They fit inside that center deck panel while the M4A3 hatches take up the whole width of that panel. Second clue, our best clue here, the M4A2, our diesel-powered Sherman, is gonna have a set of three filler ports in the shape of a triangle on either side of the hull, just like this. The M4A3, on the other hand, is gonna have a set of two filler ports with another single port in the middle. So look for that triple filler port on either side. If you can see that, it is an M4A2. And finally, our M4A4, no ventilation on the top here, kind of stands out amongst our other variants. Big clue is going to be this raised bump, this armored bump with a filler port on top, exclusive to the M4A4. Nobody else has this little bump here. All right, so now we know how useful a shot of the engine deck or the rear silhouette of a Sherman tank can be when it comes to identifying just what variant we're looking at. For example, we look here, got the big T rear plate, exhaust deflector, US markings, that's an M4A3. Small T rear plate, gotta be an M4A4. Big T, no great exhaust deflector, Commonwealth markings, and Commonwealth troops, M4A2. Armored intake hatch, it's got to be an M4 or an M4A1. And since we can see the cast hull bow and a welded rear hull, we know that she's an M4 composite. It's relatively simple stuff, right? So now you know. Next week, we're going to move our attention back to the front of our Sherman and check out the tank's access hatches, the A in our heat system. So be sure to subscribe right here to Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling so you don't miss out on that and all these other great scale modeling and World War II history videos. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.